Hi everybody, uh, Tom Matthews from Nat Matthews Engineering here again. I wanted to show a little project that I've been working on. I've been tinkering lately with uh, Arduino. Um, it's a very small microprocessor, a very interesting part and uh, not expensive and I wanted to do a little project with it. Um, one of the projects I've already done on the sheet metal brake uh, that maybe I've shown already is uh, put this uh, front gauge plate on here. This is a Matthews Engineering gauge plate. This is a 12 by 18 inch piece of plate. It has a quarter 20 threaded holes throughout it. So it lets you have a squaring arm and you can also have some front gauge points. So if you want to do some sheet metal bends or you want to do production sheet metal bends where you, uh, you know, control the length of the bend very accurately, you can set a front gauge and then every bend will be exactly the same. But uh, one of the other features I wanted to add to this Bali brake, by the way, I love this brake. This is a, uh, uh, I think this is a Bali's uh, kind of unique because it has removable fingers on the top and bottom side of the bend, which is really interesting if you have a difficult bend. Uh, one of the fingers is in the way you can, you know, remove top ones is nor the norm. But on this particular model, you can also remove them on the bottom, uh, which, you know, for a tough bend can get you out of a pickle. But anyhow, after doing this project, I decided I wanted a way uh, to measure the bend angle. And these brakes have a nice, uh, you know, physical stop on them uh, that's pretty cool. If you're doing a lot of bends, you can get that adjusted properly. And, uh, you know, you always get the same bend every time. But a lot of the bends I do are a one, one up deal. I want a 30 degree bend or usually want a 90 degree bend. Uh, but I sometimes want an air bend, you know, a 45 degree bend, and I don't want to fuss um, with the, the hard stop because I'm only doing one bend. And so I wanted a way to measure the angle of the bend, and I found on the internet, very interesting, not expensive at all, I found these uh, digital protractor, and some of you may have seen these already. Um, this is a two-axis model. Um, it's uh, DXL360 and uh, so the idea was I just put this on the platen here and then I could measure the angle of the bend when I pull the pull the bend up and the only problem is actually there was more than a few problems with this one is I was wrenching my neck to read that while I'm making the bend um, the display is not got very good contrast it also has a lot of, you know, I don't need to know the hundredths of a, of a degree or even the tenths of a degree. I just want to know uh, to within one degree and I don't want a, a lot of flickering display. Um, but, and also this guy will not remember its calibration. So every time I turn the brake on, I had to recalibrate it. Not a huge headache and it's, it does work. Um, but uh, the other show-stopping problem on this, for me at least, uh, very annoying, is when this would get to 90 degrees and you'd go to what I call 95 degrees or you know, a little bit over 90, is it would start counting down. To, so its idea of 95 degrees was 85. So it'd go up to 85, you know, 88, 90, and then start 88, counting down on the backside. And I want it to show me an overbend because uh, a lot of times for aluminum and other materials that spring back, you might want to overbend by a couple of degrees, and I wanted to see that. Uh, and I didn't want to be confused between, you know, 88 and, and 88 also meaning 92. So that was unacceptable for me. Um, still a great idea if you want a quick solution. These are magnetic as well, so it's kind of interesting. Uh, but I decided I could do a better job, and I wanted a good uh, project excuse um, to tinker with Arduino. And um, so what I came up with is, um, I'll put that aside, and um, up here, this project, I've got an Arduino in here, and let me show you what the Arduino is. Uh, so an Arduino Mini, Arduino comes in a lot of different flavors, but that's an Arduino Mini. Um, it's a uh, little processor that has flash memory, it has static RAM, it also has EEPROM with 100,000 write cycles, which, is, uh, which I used on this project, and I'll show you how I did that. Um, these are not expensive. These are about $10 each, but if you buy you know, 10 of them uh, from China, you can get them for about $2.80 a piece. So very interesting little 
uh, tool for a uh, quick you know, embedded microprocessor project, um, not expensive at all, and uh, on this little leaded board is easy to, to use and uh, uh, have great expense. So how am I measuring the angle? I don't know how this product measures the angle, but I suspect it's they're using a uh, three-axis accelerometer, and so that's what I'm using here. Uh, this is an ADXL335 from uh, analog. I think I believe it's from Analog Devices, and uh, so this device uh, gives you three analog outputs um, that are proportional to acceleration in the X, Y, and Z directions. So you might be saying, well, there's no, you know, how there's no acceleration here. What are you measuring? Um, there is the ever-present acceleration due to gravity. So there's always 9.8 meters per second per second uh, pouring downward, and this chip reports where that, you know, where it sees that vector. And so that's what I'm doing with the Arduino. Is three of the analog channels on the Arduino are reading this accelerometer, and uh, the Arduino has. Uh, a lot of power for such a tiny chip. It's, uh, you know, I used to work on things like TRS-80s back in the, you know, a long time ago, and this little chip has more power um, than a computer like that from the 80s. So it's able to do trigonometry. Uh, in particular, I have it doing um, the um, arctangent function, and I have it doing a four quadrant arctangent. So in this case, I don't have problem with when I go past 90 degrees. I can count, you know, to to higher angle uh, because I don't. I use a four quadrant arc tangent instead of a two quadrant, which is probably what what this other product is using. Um, let me show you one other thing here too. This is the display. Um, these are not expensive um, for this project. I use this uh, little four segment LED display. My other requirement was I wanted a bright display that I could see easily while I'm doing the bend. Um, and I don't need my glasses uh, and wasn't going to flicker a lot. Um, and this display is very nice. These displays have, um, this particular one has uh, uh, shift registers built in the back, so you don't have to, the Arduino is not bothered with the task of constantly strobing this display. You just shift out the segment values and it, um, it holds the last display you put up, so it makes a very bright and uh, attractive display. These are about $8. I think those you can get those for $8 or so on eBay. So here's the, here's the display on the, my version of, of the inclinometer for the press brake. And uh, as you can see, when I, when I pull the platen up, it registers the angle. Um, it also records a calibration point. So the other protractor that you can buy, you know, the, the commercial one you can buy, they'll let you zero it. Uh, and when you power it down and power back up, it forgets what its zero is. Because that Arduino has EEPROM, um, I've got this guy with a plus and minus cal button. If I want to increase the angle, I can, I can push it up. Or decrease the angle, I can run it down. But the neat thing is because it's got EEPROM, now I've got it calibrated to to plus eight. If I turn the power off and turn the power back on, uh, it will remember that calibration. So once you get your brake set up, you don't have to recal every time you turn it, you know, go back to use it. And uh, let me put it back to where it was. Uh, of course, I've technically kind of taken it out of cal, um, but that's about right. I think that's about where we were. Um, maybe one more tip up. And so now I've got this bend angle memory uh, that's going to be there whether I lose power or not. Um, let's see, I had a piece of metal we were going to bend. Where did I put it? Uh, I have a sample piece. Let's see if I got a piece right here. So here's a piece of metal that we might want to bend, and I can put it on the squaring arm there, um, lock it in, and let's say I want 45 degree bend, I can just come on up to 45, 
I went a little bit past it there, but you know, if this wasn't, this was in real, uh, I would do that. And that's a little bit soft piece of metal that didn't work out so good. What did I do with the piece I was supposed to use? Hold on a second. All right, here's the piece that I was calibrated to. And if we bring that on up to 90, showing a 90 degree bend. Come back down. And then I can check it. And uh, with that calibration feature, that's right on the money. With that calibration feature, I can add or subtract a degree if necessary so that whenever I use this in the future, it'll also be calibrated. And if you change the thickness of your metal, you'll get, uh, or different types of metals, you'd want to adjust the calibration. Let me show you how that, so the inclinometer is on the back side of the platen. That's the other part about this project I didn't want an inclinometer you know, in the way where I'm working. I wanted it hidden back there. And uh, what I did here is I just used a, uh, just used a uh, Altoids box. And uh, there's the inclinometer. I just used the inclinometer eval board, much easier than trying to solder one of those up. And the back of the Altoids box has super magnets, so it holds it in there. There was no need to drill any holes into the press brake, although I did drill some behind here to mount the, the display. Anyhow, that's, uh, that's the latest project here at Matthews Engineering. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video and I uh, hope uh, your projects go well. And uh, thanks again for Matthews Engineering. <laughs>